Yeah, so this here. room right now is just full of Austin power players. I just so much, so much Austin power. <laughs> just the most like undervalued social media presence Aww. in the town. That's true, especially especially not me. No, I, <laughs> I don't do a lot. Of you're, social. you're in that category. <laughs> I, I don't think I have a lot going on, on social man. I don't. I my tweets consist of like from ten to one a.m. when I'm drinking, and that's about it. That's when the magic comes out, though. That's true. Connor and I actually had a really good conversation uh, yeah. the other day. On which, Twitter? No, not on Twitter. Oh, just okay. in real life. Well, Shit, not they in real count life, then. But on yeah. Twitter. IRL. Yeah. yeah. IRL on text IRL. through my phone to his brain. <laughs> it was good. We, uh, we have Connor Moore here today. What's long time guys? guest. We're big fans of him. But Aww. we have a first time visitor with us on Substock today. We have Alex George. What's up, Alex? Hello. Hello. Alex, you're, you? you're hopping around right now. You're, you made a big move. I did. I just got a new job. So I'm currently on Alex vacation time for this week. Hell yeah. I just left the Chivery. I was their e-com social manager. And now I'm going to be the marketing manager for a brewery in town. So I'm super excited. We're not going to drop the name, huh? Stellis Brewery. <laughs> Give it a follow. That's plug time right Give there. Give it some Come love. <laughs> That's C-E-L-I-S. Salisbury. Nice. They have a great story too. They're back. Yeah. Like yeah. They've only been around for a Team, year since year? they came back, right? 2017. They just came back. Yeah. 2013? 17. Oh, yeah. 17. Okay. So okay wow. Yeah. Real so they reason. just came back. Cool. They were like, so what's the deal with them? They were like in Austin. They got uh, bought out by Miller and then wrote, I think Miller ran them into the ground. Right. Fantastic. And then, you love seeing that. You gotta love seeing that. Then they yeah. bought them back or the daughter bought back the business and yep. now they're like they're trying back. to do their thing. You gotta love that. You yeah, so I'm excited. Cinderella, Cinderella I wanna like story. tell the story. I wanna get a new audience, uh, just get involved more around town, like with events and like podcasts. Yeah, so I miss the podcast. There's a you lot. Could sponsor, yeah. Actually. That's I have people that really want me to do that. So I'm like really yeah. excited. I have so Weird. many things in my head that I wanna do. So fun. <laughs> I'm very fun. No, I mean yeah. I feel like that whole story angle too would just play so well, especially in Austin because it's from Austin, right. but also just, you know these up and coming neighborhoods and stuff like that. You get a lot of play with family style, bringing it back business models. Dude, it's like just that. a fucking beer industry too. So it's not like it's a tough, yeah, family, it's not a tough beer. Gig, you know? yeah, beer, family, <laughs> it's all built in. <laughs> and this is part of Substog, you know, the, the beer part. Yeah. It's really, it really goes hand in hand with fitness. I mean, why I else would it. you work out? Exactly. Yes. Other exactly. Than drink beer. That's the whole point of this podcast is, to work out enough that you can drink beer. I believe they call that balance. Yeah. You got to yeah. have that I don't balance. Know, it's a buzzword. Hashtag balance. Be the best you till Friday. <laughs> Absolutely. The worst, be the worst you until Monday. Again. <laughs> yeah. I like that better. <laughs> yeah. um, isn't it weird that like work life balance is a thing we use though? That phrase, like work life balance. It's like there's all of your entire life and then work. Yeah. Like it's a completely separate thing from who you are. Yeah. I think people just sold their souls to corporate world for so long that we're just like we're inching towards like fuck it yeah <laughs> just like i'm out but yeah. you can't there's live no, your life no, gonna, yeah if you don't have that work to pay for it unless you're like doing something on the side like a stripper or selling drugs that's those are the only things you can do on or the side you can pillage I mean, yeah. drive uber well, yeah, that's, that's still a, work though that's that's work. Work. Jobs, right? it's all work yeah being a stripper and a drug dealer is a full-time gig yeah. It's not. It's not a side hustle. You know how hard it is to find a reliable drug dealer. Okay. Normally they <laughs> or, or a stripper that doesn't call you daddy. Like these are these are unicorns out there. You should really, if you're doing one, why not do the other two? You could get so much more. Double fun. the hustle. I, I mean, think yeah. about it. Like people at strip clubs want drugs. Yeah. People on Ubers want drugs too. Yeah. That, absolutely. That is true. I've yeah. heard so many stories of people buying like pot and coke from their Uber driver. Same. Which is incredible because they never put that in their bio on the app. You think they get more rides out of that? Yes, yeah. yeah. higher have, ratings. Like, water bottles and candy, just like lay out the yeah. weed, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you got? Bring it out. So like on a Saturday night that you're just ready to go. You're like, here, what do you guys want? Imagine, yeah. imagine like some guy having like one of those expandable ta tackle boxes like you used to have in your kid, <laughs> just full of like a array of drugs. It's like you go fishing for customers, <laughs> <laughs> fishing for stacks of paper. <laughs> That's right. Ah oh, man, so I guess we're gonna just jump into it. You well, didn't, didn't, I mean, why not? Yeah, we we're here. We got tons yeah. of questions and discussions to discuss. I mean, we're we're very comfortable. <laughs> I feel like Connor can't take me right now. We're like, comfortable with yeah, yeah. glasses or something else. Like what is that? You gotta, you gotta have just, this like. They're a new look. It's a new Jake. I haven't seen this new Jake. No, it's, it's fine. Like this, You're allowed to make fun of Jake in his class. This, yeah, young, okay. this young college professor vibe in your in your rose gold movement watch is just <laughs> like all of it together is like. Listen, are those, those Warby Parker glasses too? Of course they are. Of okay, course yeah. they are. Definitely like, what kind of question is that? Yeah. 
listen, you, ju- you just don't get Radiohead, okay? I wrote my thesis <laughs> on that, and that's the most important thing. And Nietzsche's cool, too. See, we're comfortable so, enough, though, though, that yesterday. we're able to riff on each other because we're, we're all familiar with each other. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty familiar, yeah. Oh, yeah. man, I'm, I'm a piece of shit. I look yeah. pseudo-intellectual as fuck right now. It's great. It's constructive it's, it's, criticism. It's the move. Yeah. yeah. I look smarter than I am. That's you do the, look that's smarter. The, that's the move, right? You, get <laughs> you look smart. You, you look smart. So. He had uh, a mustache for a good bit. And then just kind of got it. I looked like an emo Mark Marin. <laughs> like <laughs> I, had just, I just had this giant bushy mustache. Like my hair was all flowing back. I had these glasses and I'm anxious as fuck. So it was just it was spot on. Yeah, it was really good. As long as Katie likes it, that's all that matters. She asked me to shave the mustache. Okay, so then it's got to go. She was I mean, over it. It's, it's definitely not what it was. Like it's all even now. It was just straight bush on face like <laughs> what is it yosemite sam honestly kinda, it, was, yeah, it was one of the more powerful mustaches i've seen in the office it's better than another yeah. mustache that's getting a lot of play right now i'll tell you that much There's, yeah Ooh, shots fired yeah shots no, fired. It, is. it was better i i'm fine <laughs> saying that he's got everything else I'm, I'm sub conversating about him but he's got everything else going for him i can have a mustache i agree i'm talking I'll about give you that i'm talking about dylan 100 that's what i figured yeah <laughs> he's on beard wash <laughs> yeah so, he is since we're all here and since we're all young people let's talk about dating in the modern world and how it's changed so much and what's different about it and what's like what was weird at first is now normal and what's weird about that mm, that's a great question dan what's weird about things becoming the norm yeah like okay so for instance like you have tinder and bubble and stuff like that right right it's it's we've all used these things uh, yes. i'm assuming dan right. have you used them Oh, yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. Oh, yeah. You're locked down. Locked down. Locked yeah. down. But a good bit. <laughs> Alex, before. you're locked down. I am. I'm locked down. Connor, what's going <laughs> on? My <laughs> dating app. He's currently, <laughs> currently using Bumble. <laughs> Bumble. All right. I will say, though, I met the girl I'm dating on Bumble. Did you? Yeah. So yeah. I met the girls that I'm dating on Bumble, too. <laughs> dating, <laughs> plural. Yeah. Dating, girl. like finding somebody in the real world, it's for the birds. It's just I don't I got a lot of stuff going on, guys. I'm trying to I'm trying to grow my podcast to medium size. I don't have meeting people in the real world. This isn't right. Isn't Do you give play. me your business card? Like, no, I, 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 dro- I drop a link to the to the podcast in the bumble in the bumble uh, description. <laughs> to and also, girl you match, they, have, yeah. they have the opportunity to get to know me before they have to get to know me. That means I have zero work to do in sorting people out. By the time we meet, they know everything. They know about everything. You. Okay, yeah. they've actually heard stories about threesomes and all kinds of crazy shit. So, so they, yeah, you're kind of I mean you're kind of putting this like. You're putting it all out there immediately, so there's not a lot of, hey, are you this and are you into, you know, all that kind of like figuring each other out thing. I feel like it's kind of everyone skips steps real quick yeah. from like Dude, traditional dating, how it used to be. Fuck talk. <laughs> just go right into yeah. like conspiracy theories. So you're theories. saying that you just don't even go up to girls anymore? Oh, no, I do all the time. I was, okay. I was just joking. I was just saying. It's one of my favorite like, things to do in the yeah. world. Yeah, it's just I feel like talk. you have that confidence. You <laughs> Actually, what I did, I had something happen for the first time the other day at a at a coffee shop here in town. Is that I was um I was sitting here, I was working on some stuff, and this girl, we were kind of like making eyes at each other, and instead of getting up, I just kind of like tilted my head to the side, and she came and sat with me. Stop it. Jesus what a move. I'm so, okay. What a power move. That's, I was like, that's bullshit. I was like, it was a moment where I got bullshit. To be tall, I was like, I was like, I wonder if this, I wonder if this would work. Are you the, like, are you woke, Fonzie? <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Do you just like hit things and they start working again yeah, too? What dude. the fuck? When, when you when you nudge a coke machine, that is when does it just come out? No. Oh, I, I, nothing. I no, that happened for everybody. No, oh people don't just God. slide me my usual drink at bars and go. It's on the house. Like that doesn't happen to me. Okay. Kyle's like, I mean. Connor's like a movie. He's like yeah. the no, character in a movie. It's yeah. bullshit. It's bullshit. Yeah. It's so I bullshit. I was just curious. I don't know. It's just. Oh, no, I'm not mad at you. Yeah. I'm you just saying it's it. bullshit. But I mean, there's, that's what strip clubs are for for everyone else. You so it's either this or that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what kind of black and white world do you want? I basically, I basically turned around. baristas and, and coffee shops into just playgrounds. Okay. What coffee shop were you at? Binu. Binu on South Congress. Which Trendy. is my normal. I usually go to Cosmic. Yeah. Cosmic's my Cosmic's job. great. This is a good spot. That place. Shout out Cosmic. Drop Shout the back. Um, so yeah, so Alex, did you meet your boyfriend on an app? Sort of, kind of. I met his brother on an app. Oh, nice. I went out with his brother first. <sighs> Micah then introduced me oh, word? to his brother. And the brother I went out with never hit me back up after our date. So I was like, hey, I met your brother. What's going on with us? No, I said, hey, what's going on with us? He's like, well, I'm dating somebody now. I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, I just met your brother. He's cute. Can you give him my number? 
And then his brother texted me. And then we've been going out ever since like a year. What great bro. Yeah. Six God damn. Well, I it's love like, that, yeah. Yeah. you're not going to reach out to me. I see something I like. I'm going to go after it. I'm not just going to like wait around for you to text me. That's good. And you know what? Now that you mentioned that, I've noticed that a lot more like, you know, I guess when we were in college and stuff like that, guys had to like really do the first move thing and they had to be the people seeking people out. At least that's how I saw it. Like, it, you know, North Florida, maybe it's different other places, but it seems like that, that kind of dynamic, the power dynamic of you have to do this and you have to do that. There's like roles in how courting works. Mm -hmm. That's kind of gone to the wayside a little bit with the apps too. Yeah. Like especially with Bumble, I feel like Bumble's giving girls that power. Yeah. So yeah. the whole thing is like, you have the message first, right? Okay. Yep. So you don't just serenade a girl with all your pledge bros. No, you can't <laughs> oh do that. <laughs> hey, we're, you want to go to the semi formal? Hey, you know, we're going to write this really funny song that's kind of riddled with like misogyny <laughs> and some weird uh, context to it. But yeah, no, I, I mean, like, I never had Bumble. I, when I started dating my fiance, she, we, Bumble didn't exist. So that's like a new dynamic for me. So what, what are some of the things like Dan's done it? What, what are some of the ways that you guys have tried to, I, I guess you put the po podcast out. What are some of the ways that you try to make yourselves look like you have value? And then what, are, Alex, I guess after they're done, what are some of the things that you're kind of looking for in that format? I mean, not now, but when you were using it. So dating apps were like incredibly easy. Cause if you're, if you have an ounce of originality or a sense of humor, it's like, shooting fish in a barrel it's, right it's so fucking easy it is man and that's i said that like most dating apps for girls and i've gone through some of my friends like they'll have they'll show me their dating apps and it's like they're playing whack-a-mole with like boring white dudes like it's just <laughs> the same shit over and over again just popping up from a different direction so having any kind of originality and being genuine in the few words that you have to share with someone and your photos like show that you're not fucking boring yeah you can just right. not be boring and not be boring that's really like you can do that you're in the top two percent of people okay so like what's an example of like a boring white dude line what Alex? do you do how long have you been in austin when did you move here <laughs> blah 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 what's your favorite place to go like give me something else like see something that you see in my picture like call me out for something like make it original like don't ask me the same question you ask every girl okay yeah that's that's yeah. actually a girl sent me like four questions that i was like how many people have answered these yeah it was it, she said several yeah, it's just boring. It. But that's that's funny too. It's like if you're a guy writing a bio, especially if you're, on, if you're on Bumble, you need to give them something in either your picture or your bio to ask you about because girls aren't used to making the first mm -hmm. move. So it's like put something in there like you like to read or that you like tacos. Like it doesn't have to be anything. Just tee it up to where they can ask you like what's your favorite taco place in town, which for girls is a lot easier than guys too when you're on their first. I mean, the girls make the first move on Bumble, but the guy actually, I think, have to keep has, it going. They have to yeah. carry it, right? Let, let, so let's okay. not get twisted. There are some basic ass bitches, both men and female, on all dating apps. Oh, like, yeah. for sure. 95, 99% of all people on dating apps suck. I'm almost 100% <laughs> one of those people. <laughs> I think this is people in general. Yeah, in yeah, general. Yeah. 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 I think I had the most basic Tinder profile of all time when I was doing it. Like, I had a picture of me by the water somewhere. Like, of course. You had a gator game, I'm sure. I didn't have a gator game. Aww. I didn't. Um, I talked about the gators, of course, because I can't <laughs> shut my mouth about them, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I had like the water pic. I had a picture with a dog, a picture of me in a suit, and then like one crazy social picture from when I was in a fraternity and like I was wearing a funny costume. But like I feel like that was just so boilerplate white guy. And then it was like a funny joke. You don't even have to be that original. I feel like it's just become people regurgitating what they hear on podcasts now. I mean, there's so many content boys out there just doing the work for you. Seriously. I don't know why you wouldn't use that. Have just you listened to some Rogan? Exactly. So oh, you, God. oh, dude. Oh, God. Jo he, okay. I, I, I've mentioned this to a few people. There's the bell. <laughs> Joe Rogan is Oprah Winfrey for alphas. It's, it's Oprah Winfrey for alphas. That's who he is. And there's another, I like Joe Rogan as a person. I think he's a good comedian. Okay, Are you going to do that every time it. I say his name? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> he's, he, Micah is teed up for the Joe Rogan bell, but Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> I'm going to throw you through a fucking window. I was wondering why that bell was there. Yeah, every time we say JR, the full part, he rings it. We're not going to do it again for him because he likes ringing it. But so like his fans are like, so I really like the band Tool. I really like the band Tool. I think they're great musicians, but their biggest fans are asshats. Like they're huge asshats. And I think there's like this subculture of like super Joe Rogan fans, like where it's like, the the one percent of just people are like dude don't 
like the red pillars and stuff like that. They're like, everything has to be about defining your masculinity and exuding it where it gets a little creepy for me, but yeah, there's a lot of good talking points. There are, and I, uh, I cherry pick with Rogan's podcast. I, mean, I, I don't think I've ever been one of the guys that listen to all of them, but if it has like, if Chris Ryan's Someone on there, like, like he's the host of tangentially speaking, he wrote sex at dawn. If he's on there or Duncan Trussell, like I'm guaranteed to listen or, or Brian Lord, Callen, your Lord and savior, Jordan Peterson, Jordan, oh, JP, JP is the man. If he's on there, yeah, I'm definitely going to be listening to three hours of that conversation just because Joe asked really, really good questions. But there's some stuff, yeah, that his, his fans and a lot of the, yeah, you have to think about where his fans came from. A lot of the mm-hmm. OG guys that are on Reddit and just like stroking them off are their <laughs> UFC fans. Like those guys wear st- studded t shirts and like, that's true. Love to watch people beat the death out of each other. Like, Con- context is important. Yeah, yeah. So it's like those, those, those people aren't necessarily awesome. All right. <laughs> so like there's a lot of good podcasts out there and there's a lot of good content. But it's not considered intellectual in a way, like when you're bringing it to a conversation at a date or something like, like that. It's not like recording a book. Like, yeah, true. It, when like, okay, you're talking about, I don't know, uh, Nietzsche or, in, or uh, I don't know, Proust or whatever book yeah. you've just read and you sound intellectual. I feel like there's almost like kind of a blemish on like, oh, I, you start off with like a conversation about a podcast or like, do you feel that way? I don't know. I, I've been out of it, so I can't really speak to this, but you Imagine, mentioned it you yesterday. You don't even credit the podcast. You just take it oh, as your own yeah. personality. Oh. Have, you ever, have you ever caught that? Have you ever caught that, Alex? People no. Know? Nobody can really catch it unless they listen to the unless podcast. Unless they listen to the podcast, yeah. They're like, that sounds oddly familiar. <laughs> That's weird. Okay, so like, do you think this is a thing? Okay, is this just one of those things, Dan, that you do that you oh, do that. attribute to the rest of society? I listen to the podcast to like avoid sounding like somebody else. Oh, that's a good So you're, you're making sure you don't sound like anybody else on yeah. the podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, there's people out there that I know just listen to podcasts and like that's pretty much, they just regurgitate what, that's their See, whole personality. See, I've never heard that. Yeah, that's, I, you brought it up and so I'm like wondering how often this happens. I'm sorry, it's probably more than you I think. don't think people intend to do it either. It's like they just, they, they're, they're, just they're so painting conscious. other people's Right. Yeah, it's just fresh in the brain because there's so many podcasts I'm sure they're right. constantly listening yeah. to things. And it's like something they yeah. agree with. So they're right. like, oh, well, I could just like kind Resist. of reward this. Isn't it this. funny how podcasts give you the option to dive so deep into something that you already agree with and yeah. the <laughs> level of confirmation bias is like just through else. the roof. Do you ever listen to podcasts though where you're like, no, fuck you, man. Like that's so wrong. <laughs> I know, so you're, I'm going to spend two hours of my life listening to something I don't agree with. That's like, how people feel when they listen to me. Is it? The same for the most part. There's only one podcast I remember like when I listen to the whole way through I don't agree with anything they're fucking saying. It was a it was a waking up episode with Sam Harris. Yeah, uh, it was on the the bell curve, the IQ bell curve. Have you heard that one? Uh, it's like a prose distribution uh, about like IQ through uh, ethno socio economic groups. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you guys are sounding so too intellectual. What for what me. was the yeah? That, so it was that's <laughs> like basically <laughs> IQ relative to how much money you make. Jake's just yeah. Jake's gotcha. just repeated I just, podcast I just, right I just now. mansplained to you. <laughs> it was inter ethnicity. Inter ethnicity too. That works. Was, they that's, were like that's no straight up what? toxic masculinity. Right they were like, <laughs> anyway, it's beyond the point. Um right. What are so you like, getting at, man? So what I'm saying is I would say something about that, like sounding all smart, and really it's not me, it's just some podcast I heard. Yeah, but like that's there's no original thought anymore, regardless. How can like, there if be? you get it from a book, a podcast, it doesn't matter. Just Wait, who's spouting out like my my original thoughts sound like a 10th grader smoked pot for the first time. It's just yeah. like, <laughs> But that's what makes you you. That's, yeah, and that's, that's people, me. And some people like that. Some yeah. people like the originality. Everything's been yeah. done. There, there's Everything no, has been. Yeah, you're right. You're just kind of like, all right, I got to find a way to put my own unique voice on something. But at the, at the end of the day, you're kind of recycling something that somebody said a thousand years ago. That's yeah, true. Yeah, exactly. And I think you got to come to terms with the fact that you're just not special. Like there's very <laughs> few special people. If I you mean, take really one is, message like, from this podcast, it's you're not you're special. Not special. <laughs> you're not no special. No one has <laughs> titled you're not special. And the thing about it is you're not. But you have certain things about yourself that you value and that you value in other people. And if you can get woke to what the fuck those are, you can have a pretty good time on dating apps or dating or being married or having kids. Like Use but that to your advantage. Understanding what, what you like about yourself right. and other people is really important. I think that plays a lot into confidence too. You know, As soon as you start being cool. So here's the thing. When you start being cool with yourself and you can acknowledge what you like about yourself and what you don't, you're able to live with yourself a lot easier and be more okay with it. And that makes other people okay with you and things start becoming way cooler in that Is that realm. an age thing, you think? Oh, 100%. Man. I think like, it takes like, time. Yeah, it does. Do you, do you know any very self-aware, confident, like truly confident, not like boasting confident or like yeah, yeah, they're not. confident 13-year-olds? No. no, I, no. I don't think I've ever seen a 13-year-old that's like, man, that kid is cool. Yeah, but there's not well, even yeah. like... <laughs> like there's not even like 
real confident 21 year olds. No, no, the thing, no. About, the thing about 21 year olds, they think that they, what they say matters because they just came from a place like they were seniors in college and they had mm-hmm. the influence and it's like no one fucking cares. Actually, that's where the you're not special thing came from. Right. Like these 21 year olds are like, I have these ideas and I'm like, no one cares. Yeah. Do they something think they're so it. entitled and it's like, no, keep exactly. growing up. You have some growing up to do. Having exactly. thoughts doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> those are in the, they're just yeah. yours. They're in they your head. Up, they're great. They're, they're cute. Good. Unless you take them out of your brain and put them into something practical and like executionable or whatever that executable, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Jake it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blow it. Uh, That's so my like, segment, bitch. But, <laughs> but confidence, though, uh, something we talked about and we brought up with you guys before you got on the show was like confidence is such a like a buzzword when it comes to attractiveness. Like, oh, confidence is the most important thing ever. And for you know what? I, I know a lot of people that if Connor, if you told them confidence is the most important thing, they'd laugh at you because you look like how you do. You're you're very tall, you're a handsome person, you're charismatic, but they would think that that confidence comes from something more outward, mm-hmm. like attractiveness, and I can see where that would come from, that yeah. point of view. But also, there's confidence and there's attractiveness, and the, there's a thing on how they play with each other. Because like there are very attractive people that are not confident at all, whatsoever, True. and it can be a large population of attractive people are very insecure. Okay. Yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah. So what, like, what's the level here? With because I've met some people that I wouldn't find physically attractive at first, but their confidence has made me see them as these completely beautiful people. You know, and it, mm-hmm. it makes them more attractive. But at the same time, like, there, there's got to be a ratio that's like right because you don't want a super. Is there a way that like attractiveness can outweigh lack of confidence versus confidence can outweigh a complete lack of attractiveness? Alex, you've probably seen this as much as I have. I mean, I'm like, yeah. uh, the guy, I feel like with guys, it's less subtle. So do you want you to jump in here? And I feel like started. when a guy knows that he's attractive, he thinks he can just like go up to a girl and say like the stupidest thing and he, it's going to work. Like it may work on some girls, but just having the confidence to go up to a girl and s- spit out a line that's not just like, hey, what's up? Like talk to me about something. Like the other day, a guy came up to me because I was looking for a friend and he was like, oh, do you need help looking for your friend? Like it's just like, oh. That was so nice of you. You're like you were subtly hitting on me. Right. He was very attractive, but it's like just a level of confidence of walking up to somebody and not just like going up and standing next to me at a bar. Like, can I buy you a drink? And it's like, cool, you're super hot, but like, don't talk to me. <laughs> it's just like you can outweigh like the attractiveness sometimes makes you ugly because of how you use your words. Okay. So yeah. like the expectation of like, I can say whatever I want. It's going to work. Like I can just nod over at the coffee shop. But, no, I'm, just well, that, I'm that not using you as an example. I'm fucking with you. That's but, a joke, Connor. <laughs> but you're different. You're yeah, absolutely. Cause Connor's a good person. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks guys. You're already yeah. asking me a big time on this. Yeah. On this now episode. here's the thing though. I think like confidence can outweigh attractiveness. If you're a dude for when, the other way around, I don't know if it works. Like, Melissa McCarthy could be like the most confident woman on the planet. And I would still be cool there. And I think she, I'd want to be friends with her, but I don't know if I'd ever You're not be feeling attracted it. to her. Okay. So Bobby Moynihan would be the same way though. If we're going to use like, I don't know who that is. I mean, I thought you were talking about SNL people, but like, but like if there's, a, they're very untracked men. I could see like, even if they were super confident, it wouldn't work. Like, I don't, I don't think it's as, bi- as binary as you think it is like, Oh, it's all, or not binary, but I don't think it's solely for women. To men. I think it'd be the other way around. Too. Well, I think men are more superficial. Men are. <laughs> that's yeah, fair. That's men actually are. fair. They're, they're yeah. Much more. And I think one thing that's really interesting to note, like with when it comes to women especially too, is like being attractive can be degrading to your Oh, it's like confidence in a way, because you, you end up playing a game you can't win. It's like a game against fucking time. Like if you're getting I'm going to call people out. If you're getting Botox at 26, like you're obviously not confident in your ability to like age well. It's preventative. It's preventative. Okay. And I'm like, no, it's preventing what? <laughs> you're turning 27? Like, I don't understand. And it, but it's like, it's not that so much that it's a problem, but it's like you're, that's an expression of, of insecurity that it is, is really misplaced. It's like, we're going to the gym and taking care of yourself is one thing, right? But getting like, injectables in your mid 20s any type of plastic surgery in your 20s yeah you're like, mm-hmm. what, are you, like what are you doing and it's, it's, it's mean, one of those things where you get in a place where you're like it's it's really conflicting and then i think that insecurity leads to this it kind of funnels back into outward projection because there's like you're, you're leaning heavily on being physically attractive but you're not doing the um, 
I would say introspective work, not to get too out there, but introspective work to like understand what you actually can be confident in in yourself. That's a big thing I think that's important that people miss is like confidence has a lot to do with understanding what you should be confident in about who you are. And then it's like, oh yeah, I'm not that. There's there's a thought that like a man should not be the most attractive person okay, in yeah. a relationship. This is my thought. Yeah. I'll just put that out there. Yeah. Dan thinks a man should not be the most attractive person in a relationship. I don't think it fucking matters personally, but yeah. I, I think I, I, I kind of want to hear more about that because like sure. you were saying a game that you're trying to beat or whatever, like with with like Botox, for instance. Well, yeah, it's just like time. It's like you're going to age. It's like so if you if you have a heavy amount of value on your physical like outward attractiveness, okay, that can you can lose you're lo- you're essentially like sacrificing confidence to put it's that sweet. energy in. The, yeah, it's, it's going to go away. Where it's yeah, like, by the time okay. that like finally erodes away and you end up being like a normal fucking person, which you are deep down, <laughs> right? You have no you have no like grasp on who you are, which is which is unattractive in in the long term. Yeah. Okay. I think I was just trying to wrap my head around. Yeah, where you're coming from. Yeah, I'm like, sorry. Like, yeah. All right, yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah, that's what I think the dude is. Because beauty, yeah. because beauty is, is, a, is a fleeting thing when it's just superficial beauty. Sure. Exactly. Right. Okay. Same thing with guys. You see the same thing with guys like doing, just for this podcast to make sense, like doing too much testosterone, right. like being over reliant on like big ass arms or being shredded. But that's society. That's like what people think that we need to do like women are getting botox because they see other girls like on instagram in real life and they want to be pretty and be perfect and same with guys like guys are like i need to be buff yeah but the thing is guys too once you start lifting you get into that world you're not even lifting for girls anymore. Yeah. You're lifting to impress other guys. Well, three yeah. girls yeah. can get Botox for girls. guys. Oh, yeah. absolutely. It's for each other. Like, yeah. I dress like, the, the way girls dress nowadays, it's like, yeah. I don't notice any of that, but like, girls are trying to dress to impress other girls. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And that's what we do. Yeah. And it's funny. It's so funny to run yourself in that circle. Yeah. It's it's really <laughs> weird. Especially when like, Katie, Katie will be like, there are things that like, we've talked about where it's like, there's girl pretty. Where, yes. Like, that's a thing. I don't know what, like, my fiance would be like, do you think she's pretty? I'll be like, She's attractive in like a unique it's a way. Yeah. And it's a trap. Be careful, dude. Like that. She's like, you better. She's fucking pretty. No, but it's like, oh, she's uniquely prettier. There's something about her that's pretty. And she's like, oh, I think she's beautiful. I don't know how you don't see that. And she's not giving me a ration of shit about it, but it's like, there's very different forms of beauty. And then like, we'll go out to a club or something. She's like, that girl's dress is amazing. How have you not said anything about it? Like, because I don't fucking look at like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so your point on like the woman needs to be more attractive. Okay. So I think I, I ran this by some girls in my life. Like, uh, Veronica used to work here. Oh yeah. Uh, she also agreed with me. She's, I, I just think for like a relationship to work long term, got the girl had like the guy has to be more in love with the girl and the girl has to be more attractive than the guy. So why do you think that? That's just, it's just what I agree. Like, that's just my, but, but, yeah, so, yeah, that's so, that's so interesting that. to me. There. So you said the, the guy needs to be more in love with the girl and the girl, she is with him. Yeah. And she needs to be more attractive. Yes. But where, so what if it's the other way around? From? Yeah. What if the girl's uglier and more in love than the guy is better looking? I mean, but doesn't love her as much. There's definitely like circumstances where that could work. But I think in most relationships, it's usually the guy is more in love with the girl and the girl's more attractive. All right, Connor's making some faces. No, 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 just trying to like put it all together. Yeah. Just evolutionarily, that makes sense. If you think about, if you you were to read like a book like Sex at Dawn and you look at uh, the way mating markets work, if you read like Mate, that's Tucker Max's book, um, you think about like guys do have, if if you think about your genes and uh, take your personality and who you are and you're really a good person or not aside, like your genes want to reproduce. Right. I'm gonna make this mm-hmm. extremely reductionist at this point. But um Mikey, can you turn your Instagram off, please? <laughs> yeah. Dude, he did this <laughs> oh, after cover too. I wanna throw him in for a fucking he's so, door. He's right so now. like he's such so, a lazy <laughs> whatever. So your, 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 your genes yeah. want to reproduce and they want to carry on. And one one thing that women need in that situation since they're basically useless after they get pregnant for like a year, right? So they mm-hmm. can't there's not they need resources like food, shelter, safety, right? And what a guy really wants from his input of those resources is his genes to be moved on. That's why cuckolding is such a fucking problem, right? We get freaked out because like the worst thing you want to do is invest your resources into something that wasn't yours. Right. (laughs) Right. And so you're basically just, you're raising someone else's genes, which is a huge, evolutionarily that's where jealousy comes from. Right. So if you think that the woman has physical attractiveness leverage over a man, that actually makes sense in keeping him faithful but guys get attractive older 
Yeah. Right. And uh, that stuff, if you look at the, you know, you you can only eat so many blue M&Ms. We aged like five months. <laughs> yeah, you guys thought it was so fair. That's, just my, that's, what, like, that's what I was like looking off and just thinking about is like evolutionarily that makes sense, but it doesn't matter who you're dating. It could be anybody. Like you're going to get, you're going to seek novelty at some point. What about a couple like Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt? Like they're both attractive. They don't count. Sorry. I'm Why? Kidding. I'm, yeah, I'm totally Well, kidding. it didn't work out. Right, but still. Brad Pitt was the more attractive man. He was. He kept, yeah, yeah, everyone he kept getting he more was. attractive. <laughs> he was getting more attractive and she was staying the same. He was. Still it's, too many Brad Pitt is just turning into Robert Redford. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's insane. He's just turning into a hotter, older actor. It's, it's the most insane That's thing ever. And now yeah. he's with uh, Aniston again, right? Stop. So, what? Uh, is yeah, he? She's just getting better with Aniston. Yeah. Aniston and Nicole Kidman are two women that have just aged like, Nicole. what the fuck happened? Like, what, what did you do that no one else got? Like yeah. I guess it's just money, but money. Yeah, it's like how it's how uh, Magic Johnson didn't die from AIDS. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> same thing. It's money. Dude. Dude, same it's thing. Shit. <laughs> it's how it. Tom Brady and Cristiano Ronaldo became attractive. It's because they had money. Like, yeah, Tom Brady's an average looking dude. He's a very average. Now he's, he's got a yeah, he he's got a weird looking chin. Yeah. Makes funny faces. He, he kisses. He doesn't do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, think, I think there's something to that. But I mean, the level of being in love is <laughs> that's a, that's a bold statement. I don't okay. know if I can get on board. So with that. maybe, but okay. Here's another thought, though. What if the woman is significantly attra- more attractive than the man. That happens a lot. I know, but isn't there... And it's not like a power dynamic of like money or something like that. It's simply whatever reason they're together. Is that going to work out? Can well, that, it, it goes back to the confidence something. and like yeah. the fact that that person made them fall in love with them even if they're not as attractive. Like the way they talk, what the conversations are, like that they have things in common and they fell in love. It doesn't matter. Like t- sometimes you have to get past the looks. Right. Yeah. It's not just necessarily the looks. I, I'll... I'll kind of run this back a little bit backpedal both both people need to bring something in a relationship sure. regardless it's not like one person can't really depend on the other okay so say the man's more attractive he can he has more opportunity to cheat then right yeah so isn't there a point where a woman can be attractive enough to where she can be unfaithful and still have the guy there yeah that's but the yes. other thing isn't it but genetically yes. like psychologically it's not as it's not as uh prevalent like it's still definitely yeah the, if, if you look at like if if they were the same, but there is, I mean, I think that women's sexual desire has been um, kind of watered down, but in, in as far as like literature is concerned and the research has been done. But I think if you just look at it clearly from an evolutionary, evolutionary standpoint, guys are going to want to seek novelty more because it's more evolutionarily beneficial. That's, that's fair. Yeah. I think, but I think as we're, and, and this is going to kind of circle everything back and tie it all together really nicely. We're aging a point where that's kind of going out the window. It's a dark, it is it, out the window. Yeah, I know. And like, yeah. but we're right on the we're on the forefront. Mm-hmm. Like we're exactly. there. And as that moves forward, all those dynamics are going to change. Oh, dude, that's why that's why yeah. I see so the dating has changed so much in the in the power dynamics that are in relationships. Like I know that I'm really I'm way more attracted to like assertive, successful, like driven women. Right. Which used to they used to. Terrify you? Terrify you? No, no, no. Yeah. So I, they, were, yeah. they were always like, they were thought about as being like um, ball busters or something like that. And I'm like, no, dude, I just like, they're vicious. I like, I can take like, care of themselves. They're vicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's where yeah. that They're confident. Term, yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. It's, like, it's like, that's a woman in a workplace. Intimidating. Yeah. Men are intimidated yeah. by that. Yeah. Like, I've dated so many girls that make more money than me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and it's awesome. And I'm like, this is great. You're killing it. Sugar yeah. mama. What's up? <laughs> right. Not that much more. But yeah, yeah. It's like, um, it's interesting, but that, that's 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 one shift that's happened in the past. What I'd say, like ten years. That I, I mean, not that I've, I'm 31, so it's not like I've been in the pool <laughs> yeah, that, been long. Dating that long. <laughs> but it seems like the just the perception has changed a lot, for as sure. far as what can happen there. And I think men get still. We're like a confused species. Like we're in this shift, and guys are getting a ama- like a lot of guys get emasculated by somebody who can like stand up for themselves. Which I mean, Alex is a confident aspirant. That was a huge issue in my past relationship. I was making more money than he was, and he had a shitty job, and he was like very depressed. And it finally came out that he's like, "I just don't like that you're making more money than me, and I can't support you." And it's like you said, it's like emasculating. Did he have a shitty job that he didn't like? Yes. Okay, that's yeah. See, it's different. Like I so um, like I would say that like the one that got away. There's one of those. Like she made like three hundred grand a year, and I brought. I made like. $3,500 $3,500 a month, <laughs> right? Like owning the, owning across the gym. Yeah. Difference was like, she didn't like her job, but she liked it enough for what she was getting paid. And it right. afforded a really cool lifestyle. And she got to like travel a lot. And I loved what I did. Yeah. I just didn't make a ton of money. So that there wasn't that same, like, like weird power dynamic. Like you just didn't feel weird because 
I, we, we knew we both, we were both trading something. Like I was trading a lot of money for doing something I really love to do. Right. And she was trading, like doing something she really loved to do. And she was like, she loved doing art and stuff like that. But when you make 300 grand a year and you have a lot of vacation you days, like you can paint some fucking pictures and get back to work. Yeah. You can buy yourself, <laughs> you know? That buys time to do the things you want. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you can also go yeah. to Loom and not think about it. Right? Yeah. It's I like, mean, it's I cool. A passionless, shitty job where you're yeah. not into Damn. it and it's, Shit, and you're just sticking around. And, that's, you're, dating that's a, and you're dating a, a a a hard ten that makes more money than you. Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> challenging. I think that's that did totally true. fuck up, though. What? I mean, you could have married her and then divorced her and gotten an alimony. Like that would have been the dream. Wow, right? that's what you're wow. thinking. That's, that's, that's Dan. Dan, is, Dan, is, Dan is three <laughs> steps ahead. Always. No, but the thing about it was the reason we did the reason that relationship ended was because I was like, all right, you have you you own a house, you're doing your thing, it's you're super stable. And you got I shit together. Yeah, yeah. You got shit together. And I'm like, I'm now, I'm, I'm closing a business. I'm like moving on. It's like, I just need to, I need to do this on my own. Right. Like I really just need to figure my shit out on my own. And it, we like get to leave it that way, which was actually really healthy. And like, it was a nice breakup. But it was a like, I, I had enough. It wasn't like, I don't want to, I think I will resent you down the road because I need to figure this shit out on my own. Right. So if you're now I host a small podcast. <laughs> so no like, resentment. No figuring it no out. Resentment, though. No resentment, though. No, no, she's you, awesome. Yeah. She's, one of, she's one of, still one of my favorite people in the world. That's great. No, see, yeah. that's that's really healthy to end something. Her boyfriend doesn't like, like me, that. But, oh, well, yeah. of course he yeah. doesn't because you're you. I'm, I'm in that boat. Too. You make. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But, uh, dude, I, there's a video going around right now of this couple. I think they're like a YouTube couple or something, but they like broke up and starting to go viral. Like, could you imagine if that's the future of relationships? They broke people up. making up making breakup videos for social media dude i i can imagine that's that's i don't know i mean they they broke up on like they broke up to put it on social media they put it on or they broke up but they put they recorded it as they were having like their breakup conversation they put on it's like a first like youtube version of the bachelor yeah (laughs) is that where like we're going though it's just like everything's gonna everything is so public constant exhibitionism like yeah look at look at this look at that yeah yeah i mean it's i don't know man like it's something we talked about too. Uh, Connor and I had a little text back and forth the other night where I was just very ripped and texting him <laughs> like long things. He's like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but, wait, wait, uh, hang on. Was, that, was it Saturday night? Yeah. I was on mushrooms. Oh, okay. I was, <laughs> oh, what a conversation. I was, I was, on, I was on some drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was probably like, when, it, it was like, it was like midnight. Yeah. It was yeah. around that time, yeah. which would make sense. But it's just like, so now, this is a little off the rails here, but we're seeing so much stuff get put like on the internet and humanity for a long time was about spreading out, like conquering territory, getting away from each other. And now we can't anymore. And we have this thing that connects us all together and we're constantly looking back at ourselves and we're all freaking the fuck out about it. Cause it's like, is this what we are? It's terrifying to me. Like just like someone would post their breakup on YouTube or like, like someone would date somebody because well yeah i mean most of the like unhappy relationships are usually they look good on instagram it's like that's oh, what i was gonna say well, my yeah. girl well, my guy and it's just like these people aren't happy that's where i was going with it like is it is it much different than like dating someone for social status before social media existed like is it just a smaller more reduced form of social cloud that where everyone has more access to now with social media because like that's that's a good question. Is it really that much different than marriages for looks years ago, or is it just more common? Yeah, I don't know. I think people get more emotionally invested into them. That's the difference, though. Like if you're if you're following YouTube vloggers and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and I mean you because you think of it, you have to you have to make a video if you have a million subscribers on YouTube that kind of follow your relationship and you get hashtag relationship goals put on your fucking comment feed all the time. Well, then you got you got to tell them something. You can't just be like, oh, we oh don't yeah, what happened with yeah, that's uh, different. What that guy, like Alexis Ren or whatever, she was dating that guy <sighs> and like that the shit little went surfer south. guy, yeah. What? And then they so, broke up. What, so and, like, and she went like scorched earth and just talked about how small his dick was. It's like, bitch, whoa, you, were the, you were with him whoa. for like five years. Like, That's not cool. <laughs> because everybody followed them on Instagram and saw how perfect their life was and everybody wanted that. And then once they broke up, everybody's like, well, my life's over. Just like who was the recent celebrity couple that just broke up? And everybody was like... It was uh, Hemsworth, right? No, Chris Pratt. and uh, Yes. And like everybody's I mean, so a while, sad. But it was Chris Pratt and uh, Amy. No, no, no. I'm sh- why, why am I blanking on her name? Like if Chris, Chris Pratt went out there, he got out there, he got shredded up. Yeah, he, he went from so that guy to... He's got a body on him now. He's out there doing the work. Like if John Legend and like Christine... Chris, Chris Christine? Christine, oh Christine gosh, like broke up, awesome. like I would be so sad. Like everybody would just be so disappointed because like you followed those relationships. And I cheer you, for those. Yeah. 
And you, that's what for you no, brought. Just, he cheers for the break. <laughs> Dan cheers for the break. I just like to watch it all break down. I just like chaos. But what a, yeah, man. what a weird fucking thing to do. Like that's, that's so strange. Yeah. To, well, it's it's entertainment in the form of someone else's relationship. Like, is that really people thrive off of it? Yeah. But why? Well, I it's, mean, right now people are making a business off just like posting your life and talking about your life. That's what we're doing right but, now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not a society. That's, that's not a society. And uh, that's what I'm trying to point out. It's like, we don't have, like, we're, our values are really off because we're looking at, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot to be gained from just being me, 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 You know, like, that's, and, I mean, Shit, man, I, don't try to make us lose listeners. I don't, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm like, and a dude, should be in on this. Everybody, everybody needs to be in on this. No, yeah, everyone important. needs to be on this. No, it's yeah. fine. But I mean, like, if, we get we're fortunate enough to have a platform for it where it's a little bit more amplified. Yeah. Well, There's a lot of people that now. do not have that, and that that's got to create some problems for people, like for everyday people. I'm not saying I'm not an everyday person, but like we have a we have an outlet for it. What's like? Isn't there? There's got to be some. I don't I don't know what the word is. There's got to be some like problem there. For well, some people. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's unrealistic the way that people the people people view and compare themselves. I mean, that's one thing that was different back in the day before we had before we had Instagram and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I was comparing myself against people, and it was like the guys I went to high school with. Yeah, they, had, they were they had abs, and I was jealous. It's not like everywhere I turn because if, if I'm into fitness, then I'm going to follow a bunch of fitness people on Instagram. Just like I can have confirmation bias, I can also have confirmation on how big of a piece of shit I am by like scrolling through Instagram. But really, that's if that's yeah. my my gear, right. how I'm geared up in my mind. You can go down a fucking rabbit hole, and I think that has a lot to do. I and mean, that's why the name of that series is Black Mirror on Netflix. It's like right. you're just you're looking into the darkness yourself. of yourself, yeah. and it's like it says a lot about you, man. Like it's dude, all the, that the is. fact that I have to put my Instagram on the very last page of my on my iPhone. And then I delete it sometimes for a couple of days just to like not have it on there. That's that's not because Instagram is healthy. Yeah, you don't do that with stuff. that's like healthy. I don't put the or like you don't put the Oreos in the back of the cabinet because they're good for you. But was it healthier <laughs> for like let's say our grandparents' generation where they're like it's all about the greater good. It's all about like sacrificing for this like cause. I don't know whether do you it think, be like yeah. the country or whatever. And they didn't necessarily put themselves above everything like. They never necessarily reach their goals or their ambitions and stuff. They just kind of like, all right, well, I'm going to do what's good for this country. I'm going to do what's good for this, I don't know, this greater idea of yeah. what, I mean, what this is. I don't know if that necessarily, I think that might be something that's being told backwards. Like, yeah, I, think I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that existed the way we thought it did, like the way it's romanticized is existing. I think that people may have done, like, I'm doing this for my country in order to increase my clout again, because at the end of the day, it's still individualism, and that's the whole point of capitalism. Dude, people, well, married, married, like, people less. married, like, the first person they saw. Yeah. And just had, like, seven yeah, kids. Yeah, they, they had so much less context on the world. That's the thing is, like, when I say we're a confused species, I think that we have so much more context. I can see what's going on around the world at any point, any time. Like, if you lived in Montana and you were 18 you didn't know anything else besides like the fact that you're going to get drafted and go to Vietnam like that's you were like I'm going to fight for my country like what other choice did you have you know Ugh, it's like you you, you you had that or like run to Canada and be a deserter and be a you know whatever whatever it's like you just have such little context versus now it's like well, I got Instagram when I was 16. Now I know I follow uh, Fuck Jerry News, Vice News. <laughs> fuck Jerry has news. Oh, yeah. It's actually really good. Fuck Fuck is Jerry. It, do, do not. Do is, not. It, is it just copy pasted from Vice? Is it the Vice News? Yeah. It's all plagiarized. It's copy and pasted from, uh, from like CNN and stuff. It's, but it's there will today. be no positive words about Fuck Jerry on this podcast. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's like, I'm neutral about it. It's just news. Fuck okay. So let's, let's talk about that for a second. And like Instagram importance and social cloud importance. It, this is just a question. Alex, have you ever looked at someone's Instagram and been like, okay, this is this is good, like, versus this is bad? Have you ever judged someone based on their Instagram account? Yes, like, usually it's the girls that, like, pop up on, like, my feet. Not that I don't follow, but, like, on the search page. Like, mm-hmm. you just see them and there's just, like, selfies of them and selfies over and over again and their plastic faces and their lavish as life i'm like is this really your life like how much are you paying like and it's like oh like she's holding up her 21 balloons i'm like this girl just turned 21 and she looks 40 Dude, and like it makes me yeah. feel better about myself honestly and there's people on instagram that like just it's all about the aesthetic yeah it's like oh this photo doesn't match my aesthetic with the rest of my instagram so like they're, they're planning shit ahead and they're planning like this this overall look for the page that's insane. I don't it, have time for that. I mean, it makes sense if you're marketing, if you're selling something, dude. It's just marketing. Like, but they're the selling themselves. Like, that that's, definitely that's, makes sense. That's, but yeah, like, to, like, I can say it's, it's on. They're selling themselves on social media, on dating apps. Like when you see this person in real life, and then you're like, oh, you don't look like your pictures, or oh, you do look fake as shit in real life. Like it's just 
they're right. selling that's what they're selling and yeah maybe it's wow. to sell yourself now. maybe it's an opportunity to sell tea maybe it's an opportunity to get to monetize or, yeah like no i mean yeah, really no, talking about? that's yeah. why i'm laughing that's or, why I'm i mean laughing. it could just be you know that's just like your cover letter for people to have sex with you like that's yeah. shit maybe that's all really yeah deep down that's, that's kind of what that is it kind of is it's in your validation seeking i mean we do so many things just to seek validation it's like that's the entirety of our seeking. existence yeah. as a yeah. species is to be received isn't yeah. it well that's the thing is you used to be terrified of being ostracized because that would mean you know not that long ago maybe a couple thousand years ago that you would fucking die so it's like if you got if you weren't validated and like accepted then that meant that you probably were going to die. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, but, that's not that the case society. anymore. Yeah. But even before tribalism, and this is maybe the problem with the way our society has grown outward and bigger and more connected at the same time, the most validating thing in the world was just being alive, wasn't it? Yeah. And you could live in the now because you were alive and you're like, holy shit, every moment is a blessing because I'm not getting mauled by a tiger. Yeah. And now it's like none of that shit happens and we're all trying to live in the now and it's fucking impossible. Yeah, I mean, it happens in other places in the world, but not here. 24 hours. Yeah. No, and they're, yeah. probably, yeah. They're, more, more. they're more in touch with what's in front of them yeah. than any of us fucking are. Oh, That's dude, true. It's, it's, so, it's so true. It's so true. Was it blue states? Is that what they call it? Not blue states like... No, I'm doing Democrats, Democrats. Kids, but like it's like it's it's the happiest countries in the world, the happiest places in the world, and there's some of the poorest places that have ever existed. But they don't know shit. And it's, and it's funny they, again, they don't they don't have they don't have context on what money is, and so they'll they dress it up as it's really it's fucking hilarious. They'll dress it up like these people they make three dollars a day now, and they used to make forty cents a day, and it's right. like they used to not give a fuck, and now they give a fuck, and they all believe they're poor, so now they're poor. Right? No, it's, it's <laughs> so like, they were fine. They were tr- they, they had make, no they idea forty before. cents a day on average because they traded goats. Like they didn't give a fuck. And now you, you basically set up a system for them to fail so they can start chasing you. Isn't, it I makes mean, no sense. Isn't it just all a way to make people feel less than in a way? Oh, fucking A, man. Like, isn't that isn't that the entirety of what capitalism and our industrialized society is? I'm I'm gonna be done with that. Actually, I, I need to cut <laughs> that off. There's, 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 there's no, one story. I was gonna, story. I was gonna turn this around for you, Jake. Uh, I live so other people can feel less about themselves. <laughs> Because yeah. what's better? What's better than having something? Having something when someone doesn't have it. Exactly. That God. Cause what? What's better than that? While we're on the topic of dating, I want to discuss one overlooked and really underappreciated component of human communication, and that is language. We use it all the time, every day. We talk to other people. We talk to ourselves. We talk to people that we're dating or married to or work with. Like this is something that is used the majority of our day, there's some kind of internal or external dialogue happening. And we never really take the time to focus on how we're using our language to create an empowered state, to create an environment for accurately displaying our feelings and emotions and and thoughts in a way that can be received and understood by other people in a clear and productive way. And that's why I partnered with the guys over at Procabulary to offer the core language upgrade course for $99 off of the listed price. Guys, that's one third. It's a $299 course. You get $99 off with promo code real. And what this does is walks you through the way that language is structured and how you can avoid soft talk, right? Avoid this obscure language that means fucking nothing. You can notice it in other people and you can be more direct, more confident, and more assertive in the way that you display and express yourself to other people. This course will pay for itself in the way that you interact with your boss, with your partner, with your friends, and really taking, creating an understanding of the way that you show yourself to the world with your language. Think about how often If you do nothing else besides just think about how often you use language in your day-to-day life, whether that be in your fucking head or in the way that you communicate with other people, it is extremely important. So check it out, guys. Go over to procabulary.org, click on the courses button, and you'll see the core language upgrade. It's a basic course run by my homie, Mark England. And if you're more interested, you can go check out. I've done several podcasts with this guy. He's become a mentor to me, one of the most influential people in my life, hands down and this course works it's fantastic there's a 30-day money-back guarantee so dive in check it out vocabulary.org promo code real 99 dollars off get some and communicate better you will not regret it alex we don't we always get ladies on the show we're gonna ask you some questions about you know you're prevalent on social media uh you have an audience and so we're just gonna ask you some questions about operating in that environment Let's hear it. Um, so the first one, DMs are a thing. Guys uh, do them. 
They're the worst. Okay. So the first question is, should you DM someone at all that you see? Like, is that even a, an appropriate f- facility of like, is that a appropriate way to facilitate a conversation between someone you're interested in? There's ways of handling DMs. Like, let's say you random, casually meet somebody or know somebody through a friend. Don't text me. Can I see your boobs? Do you sell your pictures? Like Jesus DMs Christ. like that. Yeah. Are, Does that happen often? Yes. Okay. So... The yes. follow up question is, what's the creepiest DM you've ever yes. had? Yes, I've one? got I've gotten some weird ones. But okay, those have been like my most recent ones, and they're just like in that. Can I see your boobs? Yes. Do you sell your pics? Like I've got that the other day. I was like, what? Was you, that's I've disgusting. Got some creepy DMs, but it's usually about like Mia. Like someone yeah. will be like, "Do you have Mia Khalifa's number?" I'm like, "Why would I ever give uh, it to you, dude?" Yeah. yeah. Obviously, yeah, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> but one time I went out with like a group of people it was, like a year or two ago, and this guy and I were hitting it off and we never got each other's numbers. And then he like sent me like a really cute, sweet DM. And then we went on a few dates. So I think it's, if it's neutral like that, I have like reached out to guys like on DMs, like sent to messages. Oh, um, okay. Athletes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it works sometimes. <laughs> yeah. The athlete, the athlete I mean, DM is just an easy in. DMs yeah, for, for sure. Athletes. That's their bumble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yes. That's great. Yeah. That's so. awesome. Um, so like, best dm move like best dm line you don't have to like go into it you said like what what's like kind of the approach there then for everyone listening at home and it's different for everybody obviously there's no like one i think just using the context that like same to go with bumble like using the context like if you see me wearing a georgia hat be like oh go dogs like i had like an oklahoma player slide into my dms we were playing in the rose bowl and like i think that was hilarious and that's pretty good yeah yeah. but so just don't be gross and creepy about it like use a good opener that you would use in real life on a DM. I think three DMs is real life more than like a dating app. Right. I, I think people do kind of think that yeah. it's make believe because it's on Instagram. But it's no, it's like, yeah. no, this is yeah, people, you're not anonymous. You're yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can see you, who you yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you got a girlfriend. I see the picture. Yes. <laughs> oh, <that's so> <laughs> um, all right. So <laughs> Jesus, the Instagram of real life is the gym. Um, that's Instagram IRL. Is there an appropriate way? Is the gym a good place? Because we talk about this too. Like there's, there's, Dan thinks that there's a theory. If your hair is up at the gym and you're a woman, you're there to work. You don't want to be approached. But if the hair is down, fair game. Do women ever want to be approached at the gym? I never wear my hair down. Exactly. So you don't want to be approached. Yeah. I don't like to be approached at the gym. Unless I'm like making googly eyes with you like in a few times and maybe like come up to me. But like if I see you multiple times at the gym and like I make eyes at you. It's... it's funny because I feel like that's an opening. Is that fair game for Connor too? If your hair is down, can I approach you at the <laughs> gym? Anybody can approach me anytime in the gym. Hair up though. Or he might like, beckon you. Might, you know, it works. No, actually, <laughs> people will do that I'm like in the middle of a workout. People are like, hey, can I ask you a question? I'm like, no. Dude, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had that. I've had that happen. Uh, are you the guy that toasts that? No, dude. I'm you in have the to take of your headphones off. You're like, what? Yeah. Oh, uh, dude. Uh, headphones are in. If headphones are in. Oh, oh my God. In, I think it's oh, God. Some people don't know that. It doesn't matter if they're rolling out or stretching or on a bike. Like, no. So I know someone did approach you at the gym, though. I just out of curiosity, I do. They approached me. Yeah, totally. What? I've approached Alex at the gym. I'm not gonna say his name. She's been at Gold's. There. Why are you just talking to the mic? Oh, okay. So mic. he. Yeah. So what was what, like that wasn't creepy. He chased after me. I left the gym and he like chased <laughs> after me and then asked me for my number outside the gym. Okay, so full disclosure. Too. Is that weird? Jake said a name off mic that was not about me. Oh no. Because. I feel like that. I just let in. I've, oh no! It's just someone I know that I didn't want to blast his yeah, name yeah, on, the, yeah. I on forgot. the show. That was yeah. so long ago. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, that was see, forever ago. That's why I felt like I see, didn't want to put you on the spot. But. That's different. Like okay. you waited until I finished my workout to come up to me and talk to me. Don't come to me, me like down into a parking mid rep. Sprinting after weight in sure? parking lots is probably so. Not the like, yeah. <laughs> Alex, say you're on, you know, the stair climber. I just get, hop on next to you, and I, I'm like, let's race. That's not the approach. That's much better than me doing like mid reps, like in a machine, like mid workout. That's an easier conversation because you are next to a person. So, like, say you're doing squats, you don't want me to spot you. No. I'm a, bit, I'm a big fan of unsolicited spotting, but no. I go on it, so it's kind of it's fine. What about unsolicited form advice? Because that's my least favorite thing of all time. Because most people have bad squat form anyway. Also, uh, add on it too, you all be shirtless too. So you're like halfway there. I don't think I feel really insecure with my shirt off. Shut up. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> you're not joking at all. Yeah, actually, you're a former, former big boy, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the yeah. thing. People don't get that. That I was like, I grew up as a fat kid, man. I couldn't like talk to girls. I start sweating and I, I felt so bad. Right. Connor I, is a pool, uh, t shirt pool guy. I actually 
for a minute. The t-shirt a minute. Blue. There was a minute in my life where I was t-shirt Air blue. Five. I was I was a little chunkier when I was a kid. I was like, dude, I was fucking. Who wasn't? I yeah, was same. Little, I was a little fat kid, man. Dude, uh, dude. I was like five. Five one eighty, like I was, dude. I, dude, I, I was like, I, I was like six foot and two hundred and ten pounds in seventh grade. I was I gigantic. Peaks and valleys, <laughs> oh my all right? God. I went from like premier high or middle school athlete because I grew faster than everybody else to getting fat in seventh grade and eighth grade and just being losing everything and then getting skinny and in shape again. So I, I've I've seen it all. You have to experience the spectrum. You can't just you be like to. the cool guy. I mean, the cool guy from my hometown is like still there. Oh yeah, yeah. actually, all of them. He's all bald and has like eight kids and yeah, still lives in the same city. Actually, bald. Chuck yeah, Palahniuk has gross. an interesting thought on that. So, the really, really beautiful, automatically cool people from your high school, like they're beautiful, beautiful people in these weird, tiny trash towns. Because, like, yeah, the most beautiful people got together real early, made beautiful children, and they stuck, they stayed there, and yeah. that just keeps happening over yeah. and over again. And it's like you'll go into like some town in Missouri and be like, "What the fuck are all these beautiful people doing here?" Yeah, I mean, also there are not beautiful people too, but I always thought that was interesting. It's just it like, is weird. I'm from, so I'm yeah. from Graham, Texas, which is like in the '80s in the in the oil boom, there was the richest uh, richest town per capita in the United States, right? Which is really interesting because there was just so much oil money there. So you end up with these really gorgeous girls. It was wild. Debutons, right? Yeah, yeah, right. And then it was funny because in they would they would develop super fast and they'd be like hot in junior high or mm-hmm. whatever. And it, well, I went back from my 10 year reunion a few years ago and, um, I had my girlfriend at the time with me and the girl that was like, that I couldn't like talk to that I, sh- you know, when you had four desks pushed together, like yeah. fourth grade, <laughs> I like, couldn't talk to her then. She was already hot, <laughs> right? She was already too, like out of my league. That's the girl that like, passed you up? And, no, she didn't pass me up. I never, there was, I, there was, I, there was no, no passing. <laughs> the they weren't even in the same room. Yeah. yeah. They were at the same desk. <laughs> they were at the same desk. And I was the just story like, story oh, sounds oddly familiar to like a J. Cole song. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so um, true. Um, nice. And it was funny. So her, she ends up being a, a dentist, and I'm sure no one from my hometown listens to this that know exactly what I'm talking about. And her and her husband are both dentists, right? So I think they may have been on some pain medication, both of them. Nice. <laughs> they were just like, with I love that. I'm just well, with hey, with they this. say dentistry is like the most depressing job in the country. It, like, they didn't, I think they didn't the most, like, per capita, I think they off themselves the most. I, that's I thought sad. like the Calvins like, were. It's one of them. Dentist well, this well, yeah. it's funny because she was pretty fucked up, and like my girlfriend and I were, we were pretty high. We we're just like laughing about this, and she was like literally rubbing, like rubbing me. It was like she'd never seen me before. She was like, "I just can't believe how much you've changed." Oh my god! <laughs> and really, I kept trying to engage her husband in the conversation. I'm like, "Hey, dude!" Like, hey, and I was asking about like braces or something. I don't know. Like, like, like anything. Like, like, so so t- wait, but she's was she still a babe? Or no, what? she got she got thicky thick. Uh. Thicky That's thick. unfortunate. Yeah, she's a little oinker. It's cute. Okay. But it was really funny. It was like funny to be like, oh, it came full circle. I'm so glad I came to my reunion. <laughs> oh, and back to validation, right? Yeah, so um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, I, I win. win. I win. I win. I win. Right. Dude, I'm not even going to my 10 year. Fuck my 10 year high school read. I'm never going back to that school. Like, yeah, I don't know. Fuck that school. Anyway, I have great friends from high school, but yeah. it's, I, I don't want to see the people that stuck around Ocala, Florida. Like, no. Sick. No, yeah, it's just like I don't have anything. There's nothing wrong with them, but like I wasn't like good friends with them to begin with. Anyway, Alex, I'm gonna jump back to questions for you. We kind of spun off there for a second. Last one, we already asked about good openers. I think we've asked you about them in yes. every scenario possible. What would you like to see on the guys' side of dating change? Like, obviously, you know, we were talking about mores, like standards, things like that, just like the things you see that are typical. Like guy needs to make the first move, or like, you know, a girl should not be as bold in approaching someone. Obviously, that's kind of gotten out the window, but is there anything you would like to see change just that that you're annoyed with right now? I think guys need to be more comfortable in like their skin and doing things that they're not comfortable in, like going to yoga with a girl or doing like an art class, like doing things that your significant other likes to do. I think that's so important in the fact that you are comfortable doing that for that person that you care about or like vice versa, like girls do things that they're not used to, but because their partner likes to do it, they'll do it for them. And I think that's such like a sweet thing in a relationship. And a lot of people, a lot of guys aren't confident to do yoga with their girlfriend or whatever, go to Pilates or go eat at Whole Foods because it's healthy, like shitty food. Like a lot of guys aren't comfortable doing that stuff. But if they do it for their significant other, I think that makes such a big impact on the other person. That's true. Do you, do you think that guys are scared to look goofy or be out of the comfort zone Absolutely. in front of a girl that they're like trying to impress, even though that's really... I feel like it's probably kind of endearing to go to yoga class and like have a good attitude, even though you suck. Yeah. Girls <laughs> find that. I, I mean, personally, like I find that it. very attractive. Yeah. 
What is not the most unattractive thing other than like a dude that's doing something poorly and being pissed about it? Oh my god, they're it's so, so pissed. Oh. No, so it's, 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 it turns from like if you're like oh. having a good time, it's like I'm trash at this, but I'm gonna keep trying. Yeah, and like, dude, everyone likes that person. That's like yeah. this sucks. I fucking hate it. Yeah. that's like yeah. when you golf with somebody and they're just absolutely terrible, but they think they're better in their own mind, and they oh. the entire time they're just like cursing up a storm and just like <laughs> throwing clubs and stuff it's like dude why are you here like you're yeah. ruining everybody else's experience you golf twice yeah, a I'm, year i'm super, yeah. super clear about that like uh, dylan asked me a while back if i wanted to go play golf i'm like i'm not good but i'll have a great time right like i'm not yeah. I don't, but I don't, I don't practice why would i expect to be good i have yeah. the most fun on the cart yeah like, i'm like, having a, I'll have a, a you, it'll be entertainment for 18 holes guaranteed so yeah. but what i've taken away from what alex just said there is try to be vulnerable so when you go Ooh. to the gym with your girl just stack up like five plates on each side and try to bench press that. You're going <laughs> to probably not get it up, but you're vulnerable. But you're trying. Yeah, you're out there trying. I need your help. I need your help. Help me. Yeah. Like, just don't let me crush my chest through this way. Oh, uh, man. No, it's true, though. I, I never really thought, like, that's something as I got older, I think I started realizing it's like, if you're pissed about doing something poorly, there's a lot of shit you can't do good. That's, yeah. and, but you may like it. You may want to get good at it. But if you start off being pissed about being not good at it, no one's going to like being around you. And not just yeah. like physical stuff. Like, let's say your girlfriend needs a new couch. Like, go couch shopping with her. Go, like, yeah. things like that that guys usually don't do. Girls appreciate that so much. Some of the shit, too, blows my mind that, like, when I started dating Katie, like, she's like, oh, you will go. I'm not trying to, like, toot my own horn or anything, yeah. but, like, I don't, I don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't, give a, I don't give a fuck about my masculinity that much. Like, I don't really care about it. Like, it's yeah. not something that I hold near and dear to my heart. You want to go wrestle outside? Dude, I will. <laughs> I'll, hey, I'll let you pin me. I don't care. Like, but we can wrestle if you want. Wrestle. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just like some of the things that like she's told me about the guys she's dated where it's like, yeah, he would never, he's very, he won't eat salads because they think they're like. Yeah. Rabbit food. Yeah. Eat salads. Yeah. No, it's, it's what like rabbit doing. food. Yeah. yeah. It's just. It's crazy how much shit guys rob themselves of because they think it's either girly or even worse. Like, oh, that looks gay. Yeah. Like homophobia. Dude, out of here. Letting people just dictate their lives. Like how fucking stupid is that? <laughs> it's so weird, man. It's, it's it's so common. People get caught up in like wanting to. I think it's a very ma like unhealthy mask. Like, if you talk about toxic masculinity is like wanting to control fucking everything. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, I'm being controlled. It's like, so shut the fuck up and chill. I just, I just want to pet a fucking cat, cat, man. Like, yeah. Get, yeah, get out of your <laughs> bubble, your male bubble. It's yeah. it's a really boring one. It's, like, what? it's super lame. Yeah, like yeah. also, dude, sports are nerdy. Like we can be honest about that. Like I love sports and I like following football and stuff like that. But that is dressing up in a jersey is cosplay. Like yeah. that's just, uh, you're not Matt Ryan, you're not Tom Brady. It's like, weird, yeah. 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 There's some weirdness to that for sure. So like when those people knock on like, oh, this guy in his Star Wars costume, it's like, dude, that guy just likes that shit. Like yeah. whatever, it's all fucking when I like. <sighs> so yeah. crazy, yeah. yeah. Thing, you just gotta get caught up, get out of get out of your own head. But the thing about it is, you've you've made agreements. I think this happens in dating, and, and the guys that I've worked with, I see this a lot. I'm like, dude, you've been dating the same type of girl since you were like 14 years old. You decided what you liked when you were 14 because of whatever fucking reason fill in the blank and you haven't really changed much like i don't know go date a yoga teacher yeah, or go on a different. date with somebody that maybe it's like that's an easy way to learn about people that are different than you and maybe you don't marry the person but it's like just get out and experience the different things i think girls can do that too it's like well i need to check all these boxes and it's like three days is gonna isn't gonna do anything besides give you a little bit of context yeah. on somebody different than you and you might find something that you like that you didn't even know existed yeah you know just by just 100%. by taking a chance and doing right is important in oh, understanding yeah. who you are because it's an easy way to figure out what you do like and what you don't. And if you don't figure out those things and you just go with the first thing you pick, you may 30 years down the line be like, and that's what why the? people yeah. cheat. Yep. yep. What is it? That's that true. I yeah. will say this. I don't trust anybody that never went through like a slut phase. Yeah. No, oh, dude. It, it, oh, guys. I said this on my show once time. It was like, this is, it's so retarded to judge someone based on how many people they've slept oh, with before the you. It's the I'm worst. like, you were out of control, dude. <laughs> it's so weird. And the thing too is like, if, if you're going into getting into a relationship and you're in a place where you're getting into a relationship, do it with somebody who wants to change and grow and evolve as you do because it's going to happen. Like you changing is going to happen regardless and your partner changing is going to happen regardless. So you might as well get with someone who can one, communicate those things and two, be excited about them. And then because you know you're going you. to at some point that person that you think is fucking awesome at month two is going to get boring and to be able to create novelty together is going to keep you guys both out of someone else's fucking pants. Got to keep each other on your toes. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally. You don't want the same We've thing. We've got it all figured out, guys. Yeah. You don't want to always <laughs> do the same thing all the time. I know some people get tired of the same workout every single 
time at the gym. Micah, give me the read. <laughs> Some people get sick of going to the gym. Some people get sick of their boring routine every single day. Well, now you can work out anytime, anywhere with Audit 6, Audit's new home fitness system. What a Audit, pro. <laughs> I know. Audit 6 is a full body transformative workout you can do in the comfort of your own home in just six weeks. There's no need for costly equipment or personal trainers. Just watch the videos and do your best to follow the instructions. The workouts are designed to help you lose weight, build muscle, move better, and feel better. And they work. Learn more at audit.com slash grandex. Also, if you go to audit.com slash grandex, you'll receive 10% off all supplements and food. This includes supplements like Alpha Brain, Shroom Tech Sport, and Nubu, and food items like protein bars and bites and MCT oil. Word. Audit.com slash grandex. Um, what we got? I, I, are we wrapped? What is this? What do we got going left? I don't know if we have a ton more. Do you have any questions for us? <laughs> <laughs> we went all over the place today. I don't really... Did we didn't even talk about fitness that much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everybody's working out to get laid anyway, so we, we, gave, we well, gave them the... It's all about the, looking good naked. Yeah. Yeah. And loving yourself. Yeah. That's more, the than, most important. more than other yeah. people. Always love yourself. Yeah. You have to love yourself be to love others. Else. Yeah. Yeah. No, be, it's, you know. It's, it, this is the lifestyle portion of our fitness and lifestyle. Yeah, it was, it was just heavy yeah. lifestyle this time. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. I think we said fitness a couple of times. We talked, we talked about, about gym etiquette. Gym etiquette, yeah. Etiquette, yeah. <laughs> approaching Alex at the gym and chasing her down. <laughs> yeah, if, you're, if you ever see Alex at the gym, chase her out of the building. <laughs> yeah, wait till she leaves and then chase her. <laughs> so that's, that's <laughs> a really want to go the next level, follow her home. <laughs> <laughs> wait till she's in her driveway. He ran after me like down 6th Street. This is when Gold was like on 6th, like on Dirty 6th. There's still one over there. It was before. It was like under like Brooks Brothers. So I was like walking oh, down yeah, 6th yeah. Street. The one on like Congress. And I just yeah. hear somebody chasing me like tap because I still had my headphones on. Bless his what heart. What did he say? I don't even remember. Was he like, was like, hey, can I get your number? I'm Dave. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, shit. You said his name. Oh. That's hey, Dave. That's fine. Classic Dave. <laughs> Everyone's going to know who it is now. Yeah. So, Dave yeah. Rose? But I had a boyfriend. <laughs> this was like three or four years ago. You always had a boyfriend, Alex. No, I had. Alex, I was like a year. A I was single. I've been checking. You had I was a single for a time. year and a half. <laughs> I was single for a year. When? And a half. What was I doing? I was here. You were dating. Oh, oh that's right. Damn yeah. it. <laughs> you were sleeping with one of my girlfriends. Which one? Oh, that was just once or twice. <laughs> That was just twice. I think I asked you to be on the podcast once, and then she got mad. That was yeah, the girl code. Like you were off limits for sure. Oh no! Damn it. This I'm was a, actually a, this was actually a podcast that was supposed to happen. Us four was supposed to happen. How long ago? Like two months ago, on the realness. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. No, it was the realness. We did. Uh, we, we invited Alex to that. One, yeah, and then we just on. showed up on a Sunday. I was high as fuck, and we just talked. I don't even remember what we talked about. <laughs> that was like, that was a good. That was actually a really good show. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah. that was. Go back, listen to that podcast, dude. Go find it on the realness, and um, I'm gonna shamelessly plug. Leave a fucking review. With some with some words. I mean, if you came from Substog, put that in the review too. Yeah, do that yeah. here too. Like we need cross reviews. promotion, cross yeah. promoting. Yeah, where's cross your pollination? You got a podcast you want to plug? No, I don't Alex, have Alex one. Alex on my podcast too, though. Yes. And I, I, ironically, the title is Modern Dating with Alex George. Oh, shit. Did we just rehash everything you already <laughs> talked about? No, 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 this is totally new. Different. This has been We new talked stuff. a lot more about blowjobs on mine. Yeah, we oh, talked about blowjobs. Oh, you want to get into that? Yeah, it was so. Go down your significant other for a happier relationship. Both there you ways. Go. That's, guys, as long as you both are into it. Yeah, as long as you, you know, take care of yourself. Yeah. All right. We talk, do we, yeah, never mind. Yeah, we don't there. need to go into blowjobs yeah. stuff today. It's no, already good. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, yeah. Dan, uh, tell them stuff. Subscribe. Rate five stars. Tell a friend. Yeah. Leave a review. If you want to get on our hotline, you can call in for next week at 800-392-6344 or you can DM us on social media at SupsDog. That's S-U-P-P-S-D-A-W-G. Uh, and now for your motivational minute, thanks, Connor. Thanks, Alex, for coming in today. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Bye, See y'all. you next time. Are you already a completely yolk sauce piece of man meat? Does your body resemble a stack of polished boulders stacked around a washboard stomach? Do you often think, man, I'm just so goddamn good looking. What more could I possibly do? How could I stay motivated? Here's how. Hit the reset button. You need to prove to the world that when it comes to you, good looks lightning can absolutely strike twice. Remember all that junk food and inactivity you've been missing out on? Time to change that. You're not just going to be carb loading. You're going to be doing absolutely nothing. 
Let yourself go totally and completely until you can't stand the sight of yourself. As we all know, not being able to stand the image you see in the mirror is the ultimate motivation. In no time, you'll have the motivation you were lacking to get back into fighting shape. Before and after pictures, that shit is passe as fuck. You're gonna be able to drop before after, before after pictures. You heard that right, fuck boys. B-A-B-A -B -A pics. And once you've climbed back up to the top, you'll also be able to shame people about it being too hard to get into shape from where they are. Don't wait. Start eating yourself into oblivion right now so that you can be rebirthed from your fat into the douche phoenix you've always dreamed of becoming. That is our show, everybody. I hope that you loved it as much as we loved laying it down for you. Now, if you want to get involved in ridiculous conversations like this, I have created a place just for you, a safe haven within the internet for you to come express yourself and learn and ask questions and get engaged with other wild motherfuckers just like you that want to have a good time and live the fuck out of life. And that's called the Realness Community. You can find it on Facebook. That's right, Facebook. You know what it is, and you know exactly how to get there. All you have to do is search the Realness Community in that little search bar at the top, and you'll find it. Request access, and I'll let you right on in that motherfucker. It's going to be fantastic. I hope to see you there. Also, if you love the podcast, give it a five-star review. I'm reading this just like it's a fucking infomercial, and I'm having so much fun doing it. I really appreciate all you guys hanging out. And um, let's see, what else? What else we got going on? <laughs> Full disclosure, guys, it's like 11 o'clock, and I'm ready to go to sleep. But since I love doing this so, so much, it makes, it makes me smile. It makes me smile to be here closing out this podcast for the 8% of you that listen all the way to the bitter end. Again, I love you. If you listen all the way to the end of this thing, you have a special place in my internet heart. Um, the Realness Retreat is coming up, guys. Also, working with me one-on-one -on -one is an option if that is something you feel called to do. You can check out the retreat details going down August 10th through the 12th here in beautiful Austin, Texas, Hill Country. It's going to get super weird and incredibly impactful. Cannot wait. That is going down with my homegirl, Kirsten Asher. We're going to dance. We're going to talk. We're going to cry, probably. It's going to be a fantastic time. For more info on that and doing one-on-one -on -one work with me, you can go to getTheRealness.com. You'll see the tabs for the retreat and for lifestyle design programs as well. So much good stuff out there, guys. But at the end of the day, I just enjoy doing this. It makes me happy, and I hope it makes you happy. Thank you for hanging out. Go check out the guys over at Substog and all the other Grand Dex podcasts. They all have something to offer. Uh, we'll see you all next time. Peace out. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Bye.